Okay, divers. Alec Pierce again from Tech Tips. This is a this is a a, a, a little episode on hoses, and specifically hoses that break down, hoses that that fail, if you like. And, and this is the result of some comments. I love the comments, by the way, on these Tech Tips. I hope you're uh, I hope you're reading them. Hope you're enjoying them. I'm doing this just for fun. Kevin's doing them. I don't pay Kevin. I think he I think Kevin comes out to do them just to see what I'm going to say next. Basically, but anyway, we're both having fun, and that's all this for. If you're picking up some good information, some that can be useful for you, great. I'm a hero. If you don't like them, there's a, on the top left of the YouTube, you'll find a place that says exit. <laughs> but I hope you're enjoying them. I'm having a good, good time. And today, uh, as I say, this topic is in response to some, some questions and some comments. So it's about hoses that break. I've got, of course, we're talking about regulator hoses, you know, the hoses that go to your regulator and so on. And they do break sometimes. I should clarify, first of all, that this regulator is made by Decor or whoever it happens to be, Sherwood, the Scuba Pro, uh, first and second stage. But the hose is not made by them, even if it has that company's name on it. Some of the hoses do. They might have Sherwood on the hose. They have that put there by the hose manufacturer. So the hoses are made by a hose manufacturer, somebody in the rubber business who makes hoses and the uh, the scuba companies buy the hoses right size right fittings and they put them on so if the hose breaks it's not entirely fair to blame the scuba company okay if the hose breaks on your oceanic regulator it's not oceanic's fault having said that usually the scuba manufacturer will step in and replace a hose. Certainly if it's quite new, they'll do that. Um, I just want to clarify that. Don't be too quick to blame the scuba company. They don't, they don't make the hoses. Well, let's take a look, first of all, at hoses, first of all. And then I'm going to take just a few minutes and explain about how they've changed a little bit and why and how they can break and what you can do about it. There's not much. Really. If the hose breaks, it breaks. So first of all, let's take a look at a hose. Now, what I've done here, I've actually taken a hose and I've cut it. You can see here, this is a this is a standard regulator hose, and I sliced it. And I sliced it. I don't know if you can get in there, Kevin. I don't know what's in the background, but can you actually see the end of that hose? <clears throat> I'll hold it right perfectly still, and you can see I cut it at an angle, and you can see that this hose has a rubber insert in the middle, airtight and pressure proof. And then, can you see that white line around it? That white line around it is actually nylon nylon webbing. Uh, nylon plies. They're very similar to the plies in your in your uh, tire tread. You know, the, your tire uh, for strength has a lot of nylon plies for strength. And then it has a rubber coating around the outside to make it look pretty. That's how the hose is built. So the inner rubber tube is airtight, carries the air, pressure proof. And then there's plies to make it strong. And also if you bend it or nick it, it doesn't tear. And there's a bit of rubber all the way around as well. That was a hose to your regulator. And, and you know it's a low pressure hose because to the regulator, see the, the end of it? I don't know if you can see that too, Kevin, but you see the end? The end is quite large. Here's the other end that I cut up. See the hole through the middle is quite large. It has to be large because it's giving air to you. A lot of air flows through there. It doesn't go both ways. This comes one way, but you suck. You want to get lots of air. You don't want it to be constricted. You don't want lots of air to go through. So these openings are very, very large. Okay, now let's take a look at another type of hose, specifically a high pressure hose. On your regulator, if it's a common, a, a typical setup, you probably have two or three, or maybe as many as four low pressure hoses, right? Your primary reg that goes to your mouth, and then your secondary octopus that hangs by your side. Those are all low pressure, high volume, if you breathe on them. And then your BC inflator hose, and, or the dry suit inflator hose, they're identical, absolutely identical. Clip, clip on end, you know, the quick detach end. They're also high flow because, you, well, you need high flow to blow up the BC and so on. So those are all the very same as the one I just showed you. The, uh, the uh, high pressure hoses are different. The high pressure hoses, they look the same. They look almost exactly the same. Just like this, it's hose, the hose is a hose, right? No, 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 it's not the same at all. These hoses <clears throat> have an extremely small diameter. The inner hose is very, very small. What's with that? Well, first of all, <clears throat> Air doesn't go through that hose. A little bit of air when you first put it on the tank, a very little bit of air goes into the hose, and then that pressure of the tank is transmitted through that air to the pressure gauge. That's it. Very little air. Almost immeasurable amount of air to make that gauge go up to 3,000 PSI. That's all. So that's one reason why the inner diameter is very, very small. Also, the inner diameter is small. It makes them stronger. You make the inner tube, the airtight pressure-proof proof tool, small, thick wall, 
Rapid implies a gain for even greater strength because this is now 3,000 psi, not 150, and then a rubber coating on the outside. So it's strong and a very small interior. The third reason why they make that inner tube very small is this. It can happen that this hose will break. Okay? If this hose breaks and is under high pressure, air will, in fact, rush through this hose to come out that break that hole, or if it breaks entirely, it'll rush to come out of there. And you have an effect, the same as a garden hose. You know, with a garden hose, you turn the water on, and you drop it on the ground, let go of it, and, a lot, and the hose whips around. And it can actually happen. I've seen this happen. Actually, a high-pressure hose breaks, and the end whips around, and it could actually hurt somebody. Somebody has to get in there quick and turn the tank off somehow, but this hose could actually become dangerous. Now, not anymore. It used to be that way. Not anymore. Let me show you what I mean. This is a modern gauge, okay? Here is an old-fashioned gauge. This is real. This is in the 60s. This is what submersible pressure gauges first looked like when they first came out. The gauge was on the end, you see? You look at it like this. Kind of weird, huh? And there was no swivel. They didn't turn, okay? And the hose went from the, from the high-pressure port. The new high-pressure ports on their regulars, they didn't have them before. Didn't have gauges before. But now they had high-pressure ports on their regulars. And a high-pressure port on the regulator had a hole in it. So the air would come 3,000 psi. And look at the end. Can you see the end of this hose, by uh, Kevin? This is an old high pressure hose. Okay? Ah, now, look at the end of a modern high pressure hose on top. Can you see the difference? Ah, sure enough, on an old regulator, the air, the high pressure air come out of the regulator into this hose, large opening, down to the pressure gauge. And on this particular gauge, if this hose broke, wasn't uncommon, then as I described, this hose would whip around and it could really hurt somebody. A lot of air came out and, okay? So what, the, what the, why not today? Well, <laughs> today they made the hole very, very small. In fact, if you, if you're able to look at, and you can do, at the high pressure port in a modern regulator, you look down in the port, and you'll see that the hole coming out of the regulator is very small too. And this is very small. What does that mean? Well, not much air can get through it. It's so small, it's restricted. So if you had the tank turned on and this hole's blue, air would come out. Uh oh, oh, something's wrong. You turn it off. No big deal. No more whipping. No more danger. So they've actually made the opening, the fitting on the end, very, very small. The opening from the high pressure port, very, very small. So now if a high pressure hose breaks, that's not a danger anymore. So that's good, right? However, there's something else about high pressure hoses that make them different. High pressure hoses sometimes will leak. It's extremely high pressure, 3,000 psi. When you turn your tank on, if, 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 depending on, on your instructor, and on, maybe you missed that lesson, but it should say, turn the valve on slowly. Did you catch that word when, in your lesson when you learned to be a diver? Turn the, turn the air tank valve on slowly. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, you turn it on slowly, if there was a mistake made in the mounting of the regulator or something else is wrong with the regulator, you'll hear hissing, hissing right away, okay? And the other reason, if you turn it on very slowly, the hose is not poof, under pressure. Suddenly, poof, under pressure. If you watch when you put your regulator on and you turn the air on, you'll see that all the hoses move a little bit. They all get full of air and they all move a little bit. Okay, let's go diving, <laughs> kind of like that. Well, the high-pressure hose does too. And it's 3,000 PSI. So there's a sudden shock to that high-pressure hose if you turn the air on suddenly. And over a period of time, off and on, off and on, high-pressure hoses can begin to break down. That inner rubber core will actually start to leak air. And it'll leak, right? Not a big deal. Ah, it can be a big deal because it's high pressure. So what happens is <clears throat> with a hose like this, this is a standard hose, if the inner rubber tube leaks a little bit, that air leaks out, and it goes right through the webbing, because the webbing is like mesh, right? And it comes to the outer core. Well, the outer core is solid rubber. So what happens is that pressure gets underneath the outer core, and the outer core, rubber, like a balloon, starts to swell. Get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually it'll pop like a balloon. Not so much with low-pressure hoses, because the, the, uh, the uh, not as likely, because there's low pressure, and also the outer rubber core is pretty tough. But if you have a high-pressure hose like this, 3,000 psi, and you've been in the habit of blip, blip, turn the air on, so your high-pressure hose has been subject to, subject to sudden increases in pressure, 
And that inner core starts to break down and leak a little bit. That high pressure air will leak through the webbing and it'll come to this outer rubber core. And it's high pressure. And soon you get a little bump. What the heck is that? I got a pimple on my hose. Look at guys. Pretty soon that bump becomes a grape. And holy, look at this. Pretty soon, and I've seen them as big as a pear, as big as a plum, a big lump like this on the hose, like this. Like, hey, stand back, it's going to blow. And it will blow. It'll actually blow. <laughs> and the high, this rubber, rubber coating on the outside will actually split and blow. And then the high pressure will start coming up. Used to be that way. Not anymore. As with this, modern high pressure hoses have changed. So they have very small orifices, so it's not much air can flow through it. And also, the hoses are a little bit different than the low pressure hoses. If you take a close up, look, you take a look at your high pressure hose, hold it up to the light like this, and roll it very slowly, and all the, you'll suddenly, you, oh my gosh, what's that? And you'll find holes. Ah, there's holes in your hose. <laughs> you'll find a row of holes. Every two or three inches, there'll be a hole. The whole length of the high pressure hose. What the heck is that? In fact, we're going to show you a picture of that. You see the holes? That's this hose right here. And there's little holes all the way along. A full row of them. You look on your high pressure hose and see if I'm not right. What's that for? Well, I already, you already know. If your high pressure hose breaks down, air starts to leak out of the inner core, through the webbing, into this outer rubber core. No grape. No plum. No burst. What you will get, however, is a string of little fine bubbles coming out the whole length of the hose. Maybe you, maybe some of you guys have seen that. I've seen it a few times. It's pretty funny. Diver's swimming along. And he's got like a, he has like an aquarium aerator <laughs> on his high pressure hose. And that's what it is. It's actually is a safety feature doing what it's supposed to do. Releasing the leaking high pressure air so nothing blows up. Pretty neat, huh? All that stuff. So anyway, there you go. As far as hoses that fail, there's little you can do. It happens, it happens. It's a little bit like a tire on a car. You buy a brand new car, you drive 10 miles, and boom, the tire bursts. It happens sometimes. It shouldn't happen, but it does happen. You take it back and get it fixed, unfortunately. It doesn't happen very often. These uh, scuba regulator hoses don't fail very often. If you have hose protectors on the, on the, on the, uh, on the regulator hose where it passes into the into the regulator, you should have hose protectors on there, so that this fitting, this one doesn't have one, you see, doesn't get bent sharply and tear. And if you're reasonably careful, if you coil your hose, your regulator, rather than bending it, jamming it into a bag, if you carry it in the bag, you just do a few things like that, keep it rinsed off, keep it out of the sun. Sun is very hard on rubber. A few of those simple things, that's all you can do. Other than that, you've learned a little bit, a little bit interesting. I hope you've enjoyed that. Keep the comments coming. I love them. All right, Ali Pierce, Tech Tips. Talk to you again soon.